Hi, my name is Joan Vian. I'm the Executive Director of the Women's International Media Group in Maryland. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Uh, this evening we're going to be discussing the continuing changes that are occurring in America to our country, to the structural system of government, and to the debt that you and I as taxpayers will be responsible for. America as we know it is in the process of changing. We, uh, the role of uh, Congress and the position of Congress is changing. The amount of debt that we as Americans owe through the Federal Reserve and the Treasury system is increasing. The elimination of the final barriers separating all the countries of the world from world government is at the heart of the credit crises. It is one thing to read history. It is another thing to live history and to respond to change. I trust that this video and the information will provide you with the understanding necessary for you to make provision before the subsequent changes to these changes occur. So with that, please join me as we take a look at when central banks rule the world. Uh, I didn't expect to have a set of three videos to overlie and to interconnect, but that's exactly what has happened. In May, before anybody ever knew what was going to happen in September and October, uh, I filmed the video uh, 21st Century Feudalism, in which I looked at the powers and the players who control world government. Then, with regard to the credit crises, uh, in September and October, I filmed the 2008 credit crises, looking to understand what was happening. We are in the middle of major change. It's called creative destruction. We all know banks are in crises. At the heart of banks being in crises is a document authored by Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson called the Department of the Treasury Blueprint for a Modernized Financial Regulatory System. Let's take a look at the 2007 to 2009 credit crises. First of all, it is historic. It goes back to 1929. It is a conduit worldwide to where banks will rule, central banks. It is structural, changing the world of nation states to a system in which we are all interconnected. And finally, there's structural change, changing the constitution and the mandated balance of power that we have known as a country since our forefathers set in place the balance of government. So, when central banks rule the world, from Bretton Woods 1 to Bretton Woods 2, Many think the world is ruled through governments. However, it is central banks and the power behind them that rule the world. The global credit crisis is how the remaining wealth and power will be transferred. Many think world the world is ruled through governments. Central banking, which are uh, central banks, which are private corporations, began lending to governments in the 1600s. The tearing down of the barriers between countries started in 1944 with the first Bretton Woods meeting. Sixty-five years later, one barrier stands between the countries and an opportunity for the central banks and international bankers to seize control of the world's assets. Actually, we are now talking national regulatory barriers being torn down. And in fact, it is so important that the national regulatory barriers be torn down that a Rothschild, Sir Evelyn de Rothschild, uh, was on TV in February to talk about the fact that uh, national barriers had to be torn down, that he said each country must face up not to uh, just regulation, but teaching banksters and investment people that they have to work within prescribed limits. We can't do what we have done in the last 10 years. We must have regulation. Now, in order to understand how important this was, the Rothschilds as a family are very secretive. 
You basically don't see them on TV. You basically don't hear about anything with regard to them, their business dealings, or anything that they're involved in. And so for Sir Evelyn de Rothschild to go on CNBC like he's just a normal person, which if you understand the history of the Rothschilds, which is part of my video, 21st Century Feudalism, you will know that this was very unique that he was even on TV. Uh, at the time when President Obama was coming in, we have Paul Volcker, who was named as one of his White House, uh, um, White House observers. And uh, he, um, Obama came in with the same mantra as we saw from Bush, urging a global financial overhaul. Uh, Paul Volcker basically said part of his role is to help mastermind, and that is a great term. Uh, what could become the biggest overhaul of the U.S. financial system in decades. And let me say, not only the biggest overhaul of the U.S. financial system, but the biggest overhaul of the structure of the American government in our history. There have been many books that have been written. Uh, this one I happen to have uh, in my library called Rethinking Bank regulation. Look at that, till angels govern. I don't think I agree with that, but uh, the truth of the matter is uh, the present situation that is occurring right now uh, really goes back uh, a very long time. This is not a, 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 um, a plan that's only five years old or ten years old. This is, this is a, a very long overdue plan. Does it go back to the beginning of the central banks in 1600? Well, that's a matter of discussion. I don't think we can know that, but the truth of the matter is we are at a collimation point in history in which it goes back several hundred years. Many think the world is ruled by governments. The Federal Reserve lends newly printed money to the commercial banking system of the United States. Thus, the balances on all bank loans, mortgages, and credit cards are ultimately owed to the Federal Reserve. Think about that. Many think the world is ruled by governments. Central banks, which collectively control money worldwide, are using chaos, credit, and debt to finalize their conquest. If and when our government and other governments no longer govern their banking systems, then the central banks will have total control and rule the world. How did we get to a place where governments no longer rule and the people no longer have representative government? Follow me. First, complexity. The credit crises we face in the financial markets has many novel effects, largely arising from the complexity and sophistication of today's financial institutions and instruments and the remarkable degree of financial, global financial integration that allows financial shocks to be transmitted around the world at the speed of light. That was Ben Bernanke, October 15, 2008. Banks are interwoven. The unfolding of the crises has shown how completely banks were interwoven with all elements of the system, the financial system worldwide. Banks were the main transmission mechanism that spread the credit crises across borders. Well, I would like to explain to Mr. Davies that I'm not that stupid to think that uh, not only was there a a transmission mechanism, but that there was a planned agenda to accomplish the fact that if you take the top largest banks in the world and they stop buying paper, uh, bonds, different forms of paper that they, they sell and offer between one another and in the market, that if they stop buying each other's paper, they could create a credit crisis. And Mr. Davies went on to say, banks are at the center of everything that has gone wrong over the past 18 months, and that needs to be fixed. Well, that leads us to the fact that there is like a web of banks that already are in control of the world. And he goes on, therefore, banks could have caused the main problem in the first